What's up? Peace, everybody. I'm going a uh, horizontal uh, way this time. So yeah, peace, everybody. Uh, what's up, TTM Academy? This is DJ Radon. And uh, so yeah, today I'm going to be actually uh, talking about, this is a response to my last video, my uh, the video that was basically calling out Grimm's and Skills uh, and this whole lawsuit that I'm moving forward since they're not responding to the cease and desist that I've been sending since January. Today we're going to talk about the executioners, all right, because, you know, um, all these trolls and stands, like all these like Grimm's and Skills stands, their trolls have been coming at me, you know, giving me negative feedback and like, why are you trying to, you know, uh, you know, uh, protect your scratches, you know, people should be able to do whatever they want. I'm like, no, what are you talking about? Copyright protection is a, is a trillion dollar industry. You know, so today we're going to talk about why the X-Men, everybody knows the X-Men, everybody in the turntable community knows the X-Men, um, we're going to be uh, talking about why the X-Men, um, so this, you know, Rock Raider, Mr. Sinister, you know, Rob Swift at the time, you know, Total Eclipse, you know, a legendary scratch group, why they had to change their name from the X-Men to what it is now, which is the Executioners, all right? So that's what that's what we're gonna go through today. It's gonna be very very quick, very simple, and then we're also gonna go through um, some of uh, what people have been sending me and like fans, not fan, not fan stands, <laughs> stands and trolls. What all the the, the Grimm's uh, skills trolls that have been coming at me, uh, trying to diss me, and and people were coming at me trying to diss me for correcting Babu. So like you know people you know you can throw on a battle record and be like you other DJs back off you can be like you can be dissing other people in in turntablism on um, vinyl but the second in real life you get on a video like i'm in a video right now and i correct babu's uh you know mathematics people you know people uh you know uh get hurt they get their feelings hurt so there's a lot a lot of people with their feelings hurt right now a lot of beat junkies fans and a lot of you know grims and uh skills fans so today we're going to talk about why the X-Men decided to change their name from the X-Men to Executioners, and it's because of copyright law, because of trademark law. So to all the turntablists out there that are like anarchistic, that are like, you know, there is no such thing as copyright law. Who are you to try to copyright? Let me see your paperwork. All these people are like, let me see your paperwork. Let me see your trademarks. Let me see your, you know, you know, asking to see all my paperwork. I'm like, what do you, who, you know, who are you to, you know, ask me for my paperwork? You know, it's like, who are you? You know, it's like, <laughs> let me see your paperwork, you know, so I'm going to flip it around and we're just going to go. This is going to be a very, very quick lecture. I know I always say that, but this is actually going to be quick. So I'm going to flip around. All right. So we're going to flip. All right. So now, whoops, let's see what's going on. Okay, there we go. So we're flipping around. So now we're looking at this. This is the first uh, part of the lecture. So um, so let's see. It says uh, the executioners, right? This is the, the executioners uh, Wikipedia page. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so it's like full screen. There we go. All right, so I'm going to go into here and it says, um, let's see, I'm going to, let me see. So yeah, so I'm going to uh, start right here. It says, the executioners formed a DJ crew in 1989 that originally included 11 members. The group's original name was the X-Men, named after Marvel Comics superhero team, uh, the Marvel Comics superhero team, which which was chosen partially because of their rivalry between DJ Clark Kent's crew of DJs known as the Superman and after the DC Comics Superman. They later changed their name from, for trademark reasons. Boom. Nail in the coffin. All you turntablists out there that are like, oh, you know, who are you, Ray, to try to, you know, sue somebody or protect things for for trademark reasons or copyrights. Let me see your paperwork. You know, all you all you trolls. You know, the 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 copyright industry is a real industry. The trademark industry is a real industry, and the reason they decided to do this was for trademark reasons. So we, you, you see it right there. This is the executioners, legendary groups. You know, Rock Raider is one of my you know favorite jugglers of all time. Actually, no, I would say he is my favorite juggler of all time next to Steve D. All right, so so we're done with that. Now I'm going to flip over to this, this next slide. So this is just an article talking about it. Williams joined the group known as the X-Men in the late 80s, but due to copyright reasons, the group changed their name to the Executioners. Boom, there it is again. 
there it is again. So that, that kind of destroys the logic of all these, you know, turntablists. But notice that they, this is, uh, you know, this, there's a um, big racial thing kind of happening too. That I'm going to flip around and talk about this just for a quick second. So out of all the people, out of all the trolls that are coming at me, it's only men. It's only males doing it. There's no women coming at me like, like, why are you suing? Why are you trying to protect your, your 20 years of, uh, you know, of work and copyrights and trademarks? And, uh, you know, so no women have come for me. Only males are coming for me. And only European males are coming from me, right? No, there's no black dudes coming from me. There's no brothers like, yo, son, why are you, why, why are you trying to sue Grimm's? Why are you, you know, like nobody's, nobody's coming at me. It's only, it's a very, this is a racial issue right now because only uh, people of the Caucasian diaspora are coming at me, namely people from Spain and France, you know? So even American cats aren't really coming at me that much, but some American cats are. But we're going to see who they actually are. We're going to go to the YouTubes and, and see who these people are that are actually trying to come at me. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip back around. Oh, yeah. And so the last, I wanted to say that that's a double standard. Basically, it's like we know that the executioners changed their name because of trademark issues. But if I bring up a trademark issue, it's like, oh, you're in the wrong. But it's like, what are you talking about? And also another thing, um, you know, I'm let my, my, my hair flow out and naps come out because... Uh, one of the trolls will find it in this thing today. Somebody was like, yeah, you know, he's mixed and da da da. I'm like, yo, I'm not mixed. I'm going to do a whole lecture on that too. I'm not mixed. All my, all my relatives are black. Everybody's black. I'm not mixed. <laughs> and, and that's also another type of racism that a lot of, uh, you know, people in, in Europe and, uh, even in the Americas deal with where they don't, they don't recognize us black Americans as Moors as a real actual group of people. Like if you go to India and somebody's my complexion, You'd be like, hey, he's from India. He's from, uh, you know, East India. He's from, uh, you know, Bombay or whatever. You're not going to be like, um, he, his skin, he's a mix between Dravidian and, uh, and Af Af from Afghanistan. And you wouldn't say that. You'd be like, he's Indian. But if it's a black American and you see somebody that's, that's not jet black, you're going to be like, oh, you must be mixed or, or something. Or, or, you know, like, you know, my hair's, you know, light brown, whatever. You know, um, it's like, oh, you must, you know, must be mixed, but I'm not mixed. But I'm going to do a whole another lecture on that in the, um, when I when I talk about um, uh, Spanish DJs that are black, like Craze, Rob Swift, to bring it tight back into the Executioners, Eric J. You know, because people are like, Craze isn't black. They're trying to say Craze isn't black. You know, so that's a whole another lecture. So I don't want to get off tangent, but so I'm going to flip back around. So I'm going to do a whole another lecture on that. All right, let me see. And show my family and stuff like that. Show family pictures, because you know pe people people need to learn that that uh, Black Americans were real people. You know, uh, you know we've been here for at least one hundred thirty thousand years, and I've already proved that in in uh, other videos in the past. All right, so so I'm gonna flip to this Rob Swift documentary. Shout out Rob Swift. And I'm just gonna play this one little clip, really short, like five seconds. Why did you change your name from the X-Men to the Executions? I know you're killing the competition, but other than that, why? Else? Um, the reason we changed the name was because in 97, we signed a, a label deal with Asphodel Records, and our lawyers advised us that we should change the name because X-Men, you know, the comic book, right. Stan Lee, to avoid any trouble, we just changed the name to Executioners. You know, oh! Comic books uh, and all this. I'm going to rewind it. People really know you guys as, as the X-Men. Mm -hmm. Why did you change your name from the X-Men to the Executioners? I know you're killing the competition, but uh, other than that, why else? Um, the reason we changed the name was because in 97, we signed a, a label deal with Asphodel Records, and our lawyers advised us that we should change the name because X-Men, or you know, the comic book, right. Stan Lee, to avoid any trouble, we just changed the name to Executioners. <laughs> All right, boom, that's it. Nail in the coffin. Nail in the coffin. You know, everybody's coming at me like, oh, turntablism has no trademark law. You can do anything you want. Nobody, Grimm should be able to do what he wants. You know, uh, Skills should be able to do what he wants. Um, but, you know, as you guys can see, you just saw right there, the reason that the executioners um, stopped calling themselves the X-Men was because they're lawyers, right? Any artist that's a real artist that's at a certain echelon or a certain level has lawyers so me my, uh, myself being uh you know a, a black male that's that's representing himself um and protecting himself legally 
you know, I've got all these people coming at me like, who are you to try to protect yourself? But that goes with thousands of years, or really hundreds of years, of um, Europeans, you know, trying to steal black creativity. You know, whether it's, you know, Picasso, you know, stealing, you know, abstract art motifs or whatever. It's, it's like Grimm's is, you know, coming out of graffiti culture, which is, you know, a, a, a black, you know, culture thing anyway. You know, if you're, you're talking about where it actually comes from in hip hop and all that, even though it predates hip hop, it still, it still came out of black communities, you know, because we're not just talking about, you know, spit and regular tags, you know, um, you know, and, and, uh, Kilroy and stuff like that. We're not, I'm not talking about Kilroy and that I'm talking about, you know, modern graffiti, w what Grimms is doing, you know, Grimms is a rapper, you know, he's doing his raps, that's black music. He's, you know, so they're just, they're just taken from black music and then they're not having any, they're not including any black people in their, in their events. They're not booking black turntablists. So we're being boxed out of the industry right now. The only ones that sometimes get gigs are people from the 80s and 90s, like the X-Men, Cash Money, you know, Jazzy Jeff, because he's, you know, he's famous with his associations with Will Smith. But everybody else that's black, like my homie Charles Jones Jr., you know, he gave up and, and deleted his accounts and stuff like that because, you know, the whole industry was boxing him out, you know. So I, you know, I contacted uh, Freddie Swift Style last year and I was like, Yo, why don't you, you know, invite some people to, some black folks to scratch break. You know, we cut, you know, we started this whole cutting thing, you know, <laughs> we, we scratch. So, you know, why, why don't you, you know, try to invite us out, try to, you know, so, um, you know, the, the, the sad thing is, is that we're kind of in danger right now as far as black turntablists. And now with this issue of me suing Skills and Grimm's, um, what I was pointing out before is that it's, it was all Caucasian DJs that were coming for me and trying to diss me. And all the black DJs are supportive and, and, you know, it's not an issue to them. It's like, yeah, he wants to sue them for this specific reason, whatever. They don't feel like this type of entitlement of being like, hey, who are you? I'm going to come for you. You know, this, so there's, a, so there's, you know, and that's why I called some of these stands out as being racist because, you know, a lot of them are, are coming for me specifically when it's like the, the copyright trademark industry is, you know, it's a million, million a, a trillion dollar industry. And we'll show that right now and the reason i'm saying people are being very coming at me specifically is because uh i gotta make sure to look at the camera the right part with the camera is because of just the things that they're saying to me online like they're coming at me on the you know for the ba the babu thing me correcting his math and now they're coming at me for trying to protect my own works and for everybody the reason um to for people that are just tuning in the reason w um why i'm suing them and i haven't sued other people that release ttm stuff is because you know, I, I have to nip it in the bud and stop Grimm's from being able to just make TTM shoes next week and make a TTM Scully next week and make a TTM uh, bed sheets next week because he makes bed sheets. I have TTM bed sheets too, but if he makes TTM bed sheets, I'm suing his ass. You know, you know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, if if uh, Skills were to have done a TTM score and put it on his vinyl, that would have been cool. I'd be like, wow, that's hot. But he didn't. So, you know, to Grimm's, you're a toy. You're a toy. That's, that's, in graffiti culture, we call that toy. Toy, you know, either, you know, toys when you're whack or you're, you're biting other people's stuff, you know, so you're a biter, you know. And obviously, you know, um, I'm a collage artist. Turntablists are collage artists. So collage, collage, you know, involves, you know, the merger of different themes. But, it's not a collage if you're only taking from one source. Now, if you're taking from different sources and you put them together, that's a real collage. And to me, that's art. I mean, to, anything is art to me. You know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, against what he did as art. I'm against them selling it and monetizing it, making at least 23,000 bucks off of it. Because that's, they put out a thousand copies, 23, $23 a copy, that's $23,000 revenue, right? So I'm putting the, uh, you know, you know, I'm suing them and I'm, you know, I'm putting it into that. So now we're going to look at some other copyright uh, trademark disputes within hip hop because that's what the nature of this lecture is it's about the fact that trademarks are a real thing in hip hop and turntablism is music just like anything else why shouldn't we be able to protect our works you know why should European males feel that they have the right to just take from anybody in the world and do whatever they want right so I'm gonna so before before we get to that I'm gonna go to here now I'm gonna go to uh, I'm gonna pull up this right here before we get to the libraries of Alexandria um, I'm going to go here. So, yeah, this is the Library of Alexandria. Um, I'm going to go to here real quick and show some, like, images. This is one of my favorite images of it. 
So this is the Library of Alexandria. And, you know, so, so the, the Europeans burned this place down. This is in Egypt. This was the largest library in the world that had, you know, it was the most vast, you know, source of information in the whole world. And Europeans burned it down multiple times. When have Africans come to Europe and burned down, uh, burned down libraries? When? Uh, I can't remember any instances. Maybe it's happened. I'm sure it's happened. But we actually set up libraries. The Moors came to, Af to, to Europe. The Moors came to Europe and actually set up a, a lot of the first, actually, no, all the, the first universities. You know, Moors uh, brought black men and women, brought Europeans out of the Dark Ages. So this is, you know, we're, we're going to go into this because this is a, um, this thing is getting very, very heated. Um, so, yeah, so I'm going to um, flip over to this other thing. Let's see. Where am I? All right. So this is about this is about, I think, slavery. Let me. Uh, this is about patent law. And uh, as it relates to slavery, I'm just going to read this real quick. This is coming from Black Enterprise. Inventions made by black slaves denied patents. So this is just for me uh, talking about, you know, uh, 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 uh the European diaspora, you know, jacking black artists, right? Which is what Skills and Grimms are doing. All right, so Shantavia Johnson, a lawyer and professor of intellectual property law at Drake University, wrote an eye-opening piece on the history of African American. I'm not. I'm gonna. Anytime they put African American, I'm gonna say Moors, because uh, you know, as far as the whole African American thing, I don't consider myself African American. I consider myself, you know, uh, you know, Moorish American of the black cast you know because it's a caste system right because we're you know as black americans we're a distinct group of people we're not just a mix of west africans and, and, and europeans you know through colonialism we've been here for we were the first ones here you know and i've already proved that in other videos so let's move on uh johnson writes one group uh one group of prolific innovators um uh, and before i start to read this i want to say too that i'm uh i'm draining the swamp of my bigot uh, subscribers and students that, that subscribe to my channel. All right. So let's see. Johnson writes, one group of prolific innovators, however, has been largely ignored by history. Black in um, inventors born or forced into American slavery. Um, and, and another thing that's important, too, since we're talking about slavery uh, really briefly, is that I'm the first free person in my family. Uh, I'm the first free person. I'm the first person that wasn't a slave in my family. Right. I'm the first person to have equal rights. Like, hey, I could go here. I can marry this person. I can move here. I can live here. I can go to that school. I'm the first person in my family. So it, it, all the Europeans that are coming at me, um, the fact that I pointed out that it's only males of the European diaspora that are trolling me and accosting me and are harassing me. There's one guy from there's this one guy from uh, Spain. I'll show Jesus, Jesus something and I, I'll show his stuff where he's actually um, like taking the Disney logo and then taking my TTM logo and putting it, he's plagiarizing my stuff to as a troll stand to try to stand up for Grimm's and Skills or something like that. And he's plagiarizing my stuff. You know, I'm like, you know, this is, it's all, it's madness. So that's why, you know, I'm going here and I'm showing, you know, the, the, the historical roots of this because there's historical roots of Europeans ganging, ganging up on black males. Most, most lynchings that happen in the U.S., were were actually you know black males that were like myself very intellectual doing well uh, business people uh, ma people making things happen it wasn't just like hey some random guy walking around the street and they would lynch them no they were lynching business owners people with patents people with trademarks people with copyrights people with buildings people with you know businesses stores general stores whatever you know what I'm saying so I'm gonna flip back around whoops. All right, so boom, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish reading this. I keep getting on tangents. So the U.S. patent law was created with colorblind, supposedly colorblind, language to foster innovation. The patent system consistently excluded these inventions from recognition. She explains that the patent system, which started officially in, in 1787, was not open to African Americans born into slavery as they weren't considered citizens. All right, so I'm going to keep scrolling down. All right. And before I, I do that, let me go back to that other page that I was just on real quick with th that one article because um, about Rock Raider. Look, look what happens when you scroll at the bottom of this article. So this is kind of a reaction. You know, I, I'm talking about the X-Men. Look at this. Look what's at the bottom. Boom. The LP right there. You saw that? Y'all saw it? Y'all saw it. Right? You see it right there. 
they're actually, uh, you know, Swift Style is paying Google, Freddie Swift Style. And yes, I'm calling you out, Freddie F F Swift Style. If you want to battle, I'll battle you. I'll battle any of y'all. Richie Rough Tone is selling it. I'll battle you, Richie Rough Tone. I'll battle you, Swift Style. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm, I'm going to bring my uh, juggles back out. I haven't been juggling in years, but look. But yeah, you guys saw it. Y'all saw it. I, I was trying to refresh it to see if they would show it again. But y'all saw that they just showed it for a second. Because it was there before. Like, it was there static when I was showing it, when I was looking at it. But let me see. So, y'all saw that. All right. So, let's go back to where we were. All right. So, um, so this is a quick story. So, Henry Bohr, born into slavery in 1802, um, after purchasing his freedom, uh, he invented what came to be known as the Boyd Bedstead a corded bed created with wooden rails connected to the headboard and footboard. His business grew successful and he employed 33 um, blacks and, and white and 23 blacks and whites. He foresaw problems of obtaining, um, obtaining a patent. So he partnered with a Caucasian craftsman and his partner and had his, apart, had his partner apply. Benjamin Montgomery born into slavery in 1819 invented a steamboat propeller designed for shallow waters. This was a valuable invention as it facil facilitated the delivery of food and critical items. As per Johnson, Montgomery tried to apply for a patent. The application was rejected due to his status as a slave. And we all know that slave comes from Slav or Slavic or, or Eastern Europe because originally the Moors and, you know, ancient Egyptians had enslaved the, the Tamahu. They were called Tamahu or man created. Uh, that's the Tamahu means man created or Tamahu. Um, and you can see that you can find that in the Temple of Seti. We'll, Seti one, we'll we'll go into that later um, in another lecture, not this lecture. But yeah, so yeah, basically, so um, this was a valuable invention as it uh, facil facilitated the delivery of food and critical items. As per Johnson, Montgomery tried to apply for a patent. The application was rejected due to his status as a slave. Montgomery's owners tried to take credit for the propeller invention and patent it themselves, but the patent office rejected their application because they were not the true inventors. Right? And they probably had their friends repatent it next, you know, next week. Um, and we'll talk, you know, even, uh, you know, the, uh, there was a black man that actually had the first airplane patent. But, you know, they don't want to tell you about that. Right? And uh, let me actually pull that up. You know, I I'm going to actually pull up. Uh, I'm going to type. Let me see in my search. Oh, before I type it up, I found that thing. Here's that guy, Jesus, from Spain that's stalking me. So I didn't create this. So he was like, oh, well, you know, there's TTM and everything. You can't copyright. You can't protect your stuff, you know. But, you know, obviously I, I can protect my stuff. I protected it from rain mixers and they settled with me. But, uh, you know, so he stole my logo right here. This is the TTM, a part of a TTM. I have a lot of different TTM logos, but this is one of them. And he t put this on the Simpsons thing. You know, he's just trying to troll me. You know, uh, it's funny, but it's, you know, it, it's, they're harassing me, though, because they're just doing it nonstop. Like, taking this Walt Disney thing right here. This is the same guy, Jesus. All right, we're back. You see, right when I started talking about Disney, they cut me off, right? <laughs> I was showing the Disney thing. All right, so I'm going to go back. All right, so let me go back to where I was before. All right, and I'm going to go back to right where I was. All right, so yeah, this guy, Jesus, um, this guy, Jesus, uh, you know, he's like taking the Walt Disney logo and putting, you know, my stuff on it, putting a fake copyright. You know, he's pla he's literally plagiarizing my stuff and posting it on my page. And, you know, I usually try to never block people and, and you know, and, and silence what people are saying and stuff like that. But, you know, when people are just trolling um, and it's, you know, not a lot of negative stuff, all right, so we're gonna go, now we're gonna go, um, we did the patent thing, now I'm gonna talk about Run DMC, right? So let's look over here. All right, so it says, Run DMC sues Amazon, Walmart for more than $50 million over trademark infringement. So this is just to ascertain that, you know, us black males, um, there's nothing wrong with us suing people. And if we sue somebody, there's not, um, you know, we shouldn't be attacked for it. Right. Because I'm suing a, 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 a couple of culpable parties, namely, you know, Grimm, Skills and all their culpable distributors, which, you know, include uh, Big I.O. Records, B-Squeeze Records. Um, let me flip back around. So that's B-Squeeze Records. Um, who else? That's Freddie Swift Style, Garcia, uh, Richie Ruff Tone. And Richie Ruff Tone just deleted me as a friend yesterday. 
you know, because, you know, if somebody, you know, came to me, if I was, you know, selling, uh, some, um, you know, if I had a whole line of stuff that I was selling and they said, hey, one of these products out of 100 products that you're selling, uh, we have a copyright trademark issue. I wouldn't just, you know, cut that person off and be like, whatever. But Richie Roughtone, you know, if you want to battle, I'll battle you. Swift style, if you want to battle, I'll battle you because I, I can take you all. I've been practicing all these years. You know, it's like maybe eight years ago, y'all could have taken me out. But now, you know, now I'm on a, I'm, I'm constantly getting on a, on a higher level. And if you're talking about the Rose, um, the Johnny, you know, Rosado scale of, uh, of, of excellence, I'm, I'm at that, that level, that level five where I'm keeping up, you know, I'm keeping my skills sharp, you know, and I'm taking my skills to higher levels, you know, because, you know, you're dope, Freddie. You're dope. You're, you got some dope phrase cuss, but you're still. You're, you, I've, I've been. I've been monitoring y'all. You, you're still at the same level. You haven't taken your your craft to a higher level, and you're just and you're scratching. You know, black lyrics all day. Yet you're not. You know, bringing black males into the the conversation into into your studio. But if you look at my work, you know, I've walked. I've worked with all types of people. You know, Asian people. Shout out to Gabo in, in Osaka. You know, he was on my first album. You know, Lil B was on my first album. Tess, Caucasian brother on Lex Records, Warp Records, you know, was was on my first album. You know, so I work, you know, women, you know, I work with women, you know, it's like, you know, invite women to the turntablist uh, ciphers too. So you guys are boxing women out and you're boxing black black people out. You know what I'm saying? So so that's so we're going to we're going to see who's the people that are actually coming for me. All right. So so I'm going to flip back around. Let me let me flip back around. Hopefully this Facebook isn't showing this thing vertically. They try to, they don't want you to show stuff vertically. All right, so yeah, I'm gonna go through this. So, so Run DMC sues Amazon, Walmart for more than fifty million dollars over trademark infringement, right? You know, the, and these brothers, you know, they should be able to protect their rights. So this, this, you know, goes to the fact that a lot of people are like, oh, you know, you can't, you know, music is free, art is free. It's like, nah, this is, you know, very, very big industry. Every, everything you see in your life is, is protected by some type of trademark or copyright or patent, you know, from your shoes to your toothbrush, the curve of your toothbrush to, to whatever, even, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, like Microsoft and, uh, even the trash can, like the reason why, you know, a lot of people don't know the reason why, uh, Mac is allowed to say trash can and you know uh pcs microsoft has to say recycle bin is because of patents you know that's patent law you know even though it's basically the same thing it's like hey you throw your stuff in there and it disappears you know you throw your stuff in there you drag it into there it disappears but the trash bin is something that you know mac owns you know my, uh, and microsoft can't call it the trash can or trash bin they have to say recycle even though it's not recycling it's deleting it right so they have to get around that particular patent, that particular trademark, you know. So it's a real industry. It's a trillion dollar industry. So for for y'all, your um, male Europeans to be coming for me, you know, specifically, because that's who's coming for me. And uh, uh, some Asians are coming for me, too. Like, you know, uh, Babu fans, Beat Junkie fans. But, you know, it's the only people with straight hair that are coming for me. No brothers, no women. So no people with XX chromosomes are coming for me. No people uh, with no Neanderthalist uh, admixture are coming for me. So what's up with that? What does that mean? All right. So let's let's uh, let's flip back around. All right. So shout out to everybody that's been supportive of uh, of me sending out a cease and desist for them putting out TTM theme stuff because I'm not gonna have Grimm's coming out with the TTM car next week and TTM sneakers. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to let Grimm's, you know, um, you know, plagiarize my work. So Ron DMC has filed a lawsuit against Walmart, Amazon, Jet, and a number of others for more than $50 million over alleged trademark infringements on projects using the iconic hip-hop group's name and logo without permission. The suit was filed Thursday, December 29th in New York and also names a number of companies selling the products through those online marketplaces as well as 20 John Doe's saying that they trade on, on the goodwill of Run DMC. It's explained that some of the allegedly infringing products claim to be Run DMC styled products. See, that's the that's the thing. It's the whole theme thing. That's the problem. That's why I'm suing um, Grimm's and Still Skills because they're releasing TTM theme products. So back to where I am, Run DMC style products such as fedora hats and square frame sunglasses that use the group's name in their title or description but not the logo. Meanwhile, others more blatantly use the group's famous logo on shirts, purses, patches, and other products. Uh, 
Defendants Amazon, Walmart, and Jet are accused of selling and advertising products that infringe on the trademark and goodwill of Run DMC by partnering with a number of different entities that sell the alleged, the allegedly infringing Run DMC products um, through their marketplaces. These products, Run DMC states, confuse the public as to the source of origin and endorsement of its products. Run DMC is seeking 50 million with interest as well as attorney's fees, and that, that includes y'all, you Grims and Skills. I, I'm including ter- attorney's fees. You guys could just settle me, settle with me right now. I'm not even asking for a lot, you know, just a licensing fee. Um, the lawsuit also, um, let me continue where I was reading. Uh, so I'm going to read it again. So Run DMC is seeking 50 million with interest as well as attorney fees, accounting of all sales of the defendant's products that were advertised as being related to Run DMC or directly use this trade, trademark and injunction and restriction, uh, restraining order against sales and promotion of the products. The lawsuit cites previous licensing agreements for the Run DMC trademark to show its worth, including one of the 1.6 million to Adidas for a line of sneakers. It also states that Run DMC's brand has produced revenue in excess of 100 million from the intellectual property associated with the trademark Run DMC since its inception and they, in the 1980s, including the sale of music, uh, music, music publishing, concerts, merchandising, and endorsement deals. Run DMC asserts that allegedly infringing products have diluted the group's brand as arguably the most well-known group in the history of hip-hop, saying that the defendants have harmed Run DMC's ability to utilize, market, promote, and sell products with its registered trademark. So that totally applies to what's happening here. I'm going to flip back around. So that that totally applies to what's happening right here, right now, because uh, I just had a um, a homie, I think his name is Carl Wayne, uh, you know, a TTM supporter, and he was just saying he uh, he's a DJ, and he's just saying he bought he he actually bought that release um, by Grims and Skills, and he thought he was like, oh, I, you know, when I saw it, I thought of you, and you know, um, uh, you know, he thought that they were like, you know, cool, like I was cool with it or something, like maybe they had notified me or maybe we were working together, you know, he thought of me when he saw it. So that's that's exactly you know why people do lawsuits is because especially when you're in the same industry when you're they call it the same vein or you're in the same stream you're in the same uh, world you know because if somebody is uh, you know producing tractor trailers and they have a company and it's called uh, you know let's say it's called uh, a, a butterfly um, you know butterfly mountain uh, tractor trailers. And then somebody makes but and then another company has uh, butterfly mountain sneakers. Then it's fine because tractor trailers and sneakers are two totally separate things. You know, if you have, you know, so if somebody's putting out that stuff, but within the turntablist world is very very small. You know, so and and uh, we're all connected on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, friends, things like that. And the fact that you know they're releasing uh, my my artwork and, and my you know uh, trademark copyrighted stuff, you know uh, that that's infringing. And it's in the same. It's clearly in the same venue. It's in turntablism. I'm releasing records. They're releasing records. I'm um, you know I'm releasing posters. You know TTM products. And Grimm's has no authorization to release TTM products unless he is transcribing. His own routines. So that's that's once again to all the people out there were showing why patent law and trademark law is an important part of the music industry in general. So let's flip back around, go to the next example. All right. So now we're gonna go to uh, I'm gonna go to this thing right here. Or let me see. Is there more to read on this one? Now, yeah, I, we don't need to read any more of the Run DMC thing. Uh, let me go to uh, let's see. Trying to find something over here. Let's see, where is it? Library Alexandria, I think we're about done. Okay, here, right here, this is the last slide. All right, so it says, the copyright industries in the US economy value added in billions of dollars, right? Look at that, 2017 total. That's 2,247.4 billion or more than $2.2 trillion. That's how big the copyright industry is. So to all you fools, all you trolls that are coming at me saying, why are you trying to cop- copyright music and all that stuff? You guys are just uneducated. And as the director of TTM Academy, I, I have to uh, 
you know, inform you all, you know, uh, about, you know, the history of uh, what's been going on as far as black males and their legal rights and, and status, uh, you know, trying to uh, being stolen and appropriated by males of the European diaspora. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I have to relate that today because it's still happening. Right. It's like we saw, we see that it was happening 200 years ago, 100 years ago, 50 years ago, all, all the way to now. It's still happening. And, and they're still getting cocky about it and, and coming at me. So I'm going to show the actual now we're at the end of the lecture. I'm going to show what they're actually saying. We're going to go to the actual video. All right. So we're going to see what everybody's saying. All right. So this video, so I, like, so this is the vinyl that he's, you know, that he's plagiarized. I mean, you know, he's plagiarizing all my my work, my designs. This isn't an actual score. This is just like a TTM theme vinyl release, right? All right. So um, I'm gonna scroll down. Whoops. Let me click over here. I'm gonna scroll down. All right. So we're gonna read these uh, these things. What people are saying. All right. So let's see. Maybe I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna squish the thing, the the screen, so I can see more within one part i think it'll squish if i do it like this there we go yeah this is better so now i can put it all in one uh frame all right boom there it goes i don't know why it's doing this weird half of the screen is dark like some type of weird uh frame rate issue but okay so this is the biggest attack on the dj community ever <laughs> they're, they're so hurt this is funny this is the biggest attack uh, this is the biggest attack on the DJ in the community ever. I'm talking about TTM, of course. The moment we start pat patenting patterns, DJing is doomed. Dude, you are literally suing the game based on follow-ups as paying homage and respect. But you aren't about respect, culture, or anything more than money. All right? And look, nine people like that. And if you look at the, the top of this this video, look how many people are disliking it. Look. 31 dislikes, 31 people dislike a black man protecting his legal status, 14 people like it. And so this, and that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm draining right now, the past year, I've been draining the swamp, you know, ever since Kubrick came out and his all lives matter type of stuff, I've been draining the swamp of my, you know, bigoted tur uh, turntablist uh, subscribers, you know, and that's why, you know, I'm, I'm teaching uh, social studies. You know, I expanded the curriculum to add, you know, social studies and current events, you know, clout sciences, all, all this stuff that, that that's going on, you know, knowledge itself, you know, all different types of different wisdoms, you know, to Hootie, whatever, you know, more science. We're going to be dropping all different types of sciences um, at TTM Academy. All right. So, you know, now um, could you provide us where to check the patent so people do not infringe it when releasing a record? Um, so to respond to that, um, you know, this isn't a patent issue. Patents are for, you know, technologies like a blender or a microwave. This is copyright trademark stuff. All right. So, you know, and who is this person to ask me for my paperwork? You know, that's a common, you know, these are all European males saying this, European and Asian males coming at me saying, let me see your paperwork. Who are you to do this? You know, who are you to try to respect yourself and stand up for yourself? Right. Uh, so, yeah. And I don't think I answered the first question. So this is the, you know, that, that one, uh, this is the biggest attack on the DJ community. Um, and maybe, you know, I'll, I'll show, you know, all these. So um, the next one, uh, just curious about the comment that DJs are, that DJs can copyright a scratch. Is that true? With that thought in mind, would a flare or crab be considered copyright theft infringement or am I missing something? All right. You know, and then I, I replied to that. That was, a, you know, he wasn't a troll. That was, a, you know, it was a good question. So I was like, great question. As far as law, nearly anything can be copyrighted. Our DNA can't, though. They ruled that we all maintain the rights to our DNA, to our own DNA code. But as far as art, a copyright is only as good as the lawyer or pro se litigant that is enforcing it. So TTM provides something to show in court to the judge and or jury in the discovery process. Discovery is when all the, let me click read more. For those of you who know, the discovery process is when you basically like, you know, you bring out all the exhibits and everything that's going to be part of the case. All right. So, um, so, um, so a recording of the song is valid. Oh, whoops. Discovery is when all the items involved in the case are tallied and organized on paper. So a recording of a song is valid and transcriptions of it too, if the judge or jury values it. As far as one scratch or one sound, like hitting the C note on the keyboard, those cannot be copyrighted because they are not long enough. 
just like hitting a drum once or doing just a drum roll. So one crab is not technically a composition or melody, but if you add three crabs and some negative space, you got yourself a pattern that can be protected, right? And that's the reason why I created TTM was for people to be able to protect their works, right? And that's why I'm coming at Grimm's to, and I'm protecting my works, right? That's the whole point of it, all right? Now, what you said is just one of the most insanely idiotic things I've ever heard at no point in your rambling, incoherent response. And so, you know, I'm, uh, you know, I, um, just for the record, he's call he's saying I'm rambling, incoherent. Um, you know, I went to the Stern School of Business, one of the top, you know, schools in the country. Um, and everything I said in the, uh, in that video was on point. Everything I said was real. So for him to be like, oh, you know, you're rambling, you're bumbling, you know, it, you know, that's such a common, uh, European diaspora, uh, racialized, uh, bigot, bigoted motif, uh, or, you know, constant thing that they, they'll say to, to black males, like, you know, who do you think you are? You know, try to respect yourself. The same thing with like Kanye, when Kanye is like, Hey, I'm trying to do this, do that. It's like, you know, be quiet, you know? So, you know, there's no black males telling me to be quiet. There's no women telling me to be quiet. Only people that are telling me to be quiet are people from Europe. And we're going to, and, you know, so I call them out for it and you're going to see what happened when I call them out. All right, so I'm going to flip around. All right, so let's see. All right, now let's see. So, um, yeah, so he said, one of the most insanely idiotic things I've ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything. That could be considered a rational thought. Everything in this room. So that's called gaslighting, calling somebody crazy. He's gaslighting me right now. He's basically saying that I'm talking uh, crazy. And look who this is. You see? It's not a black man. Who is this? That song. He's from Asia. He's an Asian male coming at me, right? That's what I told you. It's Europeans and Asians, you know, and Europe and Asia are one giant landmass. So, when, you know, I consider it, you know, Europe just as much of a continent as India is, you know, it's, it's really Eurasia. It's one giant landmass. Europe's not a continent, right? All right. Unless you're going to consider India a continent, all right, and change the rules. TTM Academy, that's absolutely ridiculous. The moment DJs patent their patterns, we're actually killing the culture and not and, and try not to, trying not to cultivate it, right? You know. So yeah, that's, that's I'm gonna uh, read some more, right? Um, this guy's saying something funny. Yeah, did Gary uh, Sinais or Sinis really dro uh, name drop TTM and what? Yeah, he really did. I don't even know how you pronounce that dude's name. Uh, Grims is actually a DJ. Blah blah blah. Beat Junkies last week. Now this really. That's what you see. B Junkies fans are still coming for me just because I corrected Babu's math. Just because Babu's math was off, cats are specifically coming for me like, you know, I'm the disruptive element in turntables. And okay, this is a good one. Your Conor McGregor style approach to correcting the scene is getting old, um, old as AF fast, dude. I'm not going to cuss. I was just about to say it. But just because you wrote TTN doesn't mean you invented scratching. I never said I invented scratching. But these videos are making it apparent you want to use it. You're a patent troll, the likes of uh, Lars Ulrich and Martin Shukreli uh, <laughs> in one person, and that is shameful. He's actually pr uh, comparing me to the guy that jacked up the AIDS uh, HIV vaccine or the, the HIV treatment. You know, he's trying to say I'm just like some capitalist when Skills and Grimms are the ones that are the, the capitalists. You know, I'm just asking for a small licensing fee. All right. And, and for them to never do it again. That's all I'm asking for. Um, so you claim to be just that and doing. So let's see. Let me click this. Read more. All right. So it says you claim to be just that and doing things for the little man. Yep. That's what I'm wor working for. Yet you exhibit clear and visible hypocrisy when picking and choosing who gets to use it, but you have made it clear why. No, nope, I never, no, no, but this is the first time somebody's tried to make a TTM theme thing that I've, you know, that I'm blocking outside of rain mixers. You obviously feel that you don't get the respect you deserve. True, right? Like you're accosting me right now, this guy. People are trolling me. But you'll receive none from me doing um, shit like this. I don't respect this at all. You, as the creative TTM, TTM could, could build great connections and bridges in this community, but instead you make it about color and cast and try to restrict those with influence from using it. Nope, there's only uh, two people I'm restricting. Or one person, really grims, you know. Um, um, 
what the uh, WTF is wrong with you? Can you say you did this shit for DJs, then tell them that they can't use it because they didn't kiss the ring and still command our respect? You see that? This is a, and look who this guy is, right? He's a male of the European diaspora. And, and you can see he's got some deep seated resentment for me, right? Talking about kiss the ring, you know, like some type of uh, royalty complex, right? Like some type of black male, uh, you know, self-respect, you know, cause this, and this is for all the black males that are watching this, you know, um, you know, never let people tell you to put your head down. If, you know, you can put your chest up, you can put your head up in the air and have all the respect for yourself in the world. You, you shouldn't let, try to, shouldn't let people bring you down, especially trolls and people like this. So, and especially when you're trying to protect your own work. So always stick up for yourself. Don't let, you know, if you're in uh, Europe right now and, and or if you're in Africa, Asia, wherever you are, don't let them, uh, don't let them, you know, bring you down. All right. So I'm going to continue to re read. Also, as someone who supports Palestinians and its right to exist, I've paid close attention to your rhetoric and you come dangerously close to exhibiting real anti-Semitism. Where? I never said anything about uh, that. See how they try to like pull out cars? Like, I didn't say anything about uh, semites. You really think you can talk that shits, um, start all these dumpster fires in the scene and have our respect to get the F out of here. Now, I'm not looking for your respect. You know, you can leave, you know, you say you are blacklisted and I believe you because you worked hard for it. Now lay in your bed and be canceled or grow the F up and act like a respectable human. You see how he's trying to, um, sun me and teach like, you know, patronize me like I'm a child, you know, like I'm a minority, like I'm a minor. <laughs> I'm not a minority. I'm the majority. Um, let me see. So, so let's see. Where, where were we? Um, yeah, I'm going to read this. So look how, look how long this thing is, right? This is where it gets in the stand world. Like, look how long. That's a whole little dissertation right there. It's a whole paragraph. All right. So where was I? Um, so let's see. So I'm going to highlight it so we can see. So this is, about, this is where we are right now about the blacklisting and stuff, right? Um, so yeah, so let me repeat that. So now lay in your bed and be canceled or grow the F up and act like a responsible human being so we can all enjoy, appreciate, respect and honor you and your work instead of feeling repulsed by you. Let us also recognize that it's other people's work. You didn't write all those scratches. You just developed a transcript. You just developed a transcription methodology and not to discredit your efforts, but if you want to act like a jackass, the people don't have to respect you as a man or human being. These people you are putting down are great. You diss yourself by smearing them and trying to uh, denigrate their character institutions. But all I did was correct Babu and try to protect my copyrighted works. Right? Nothing wrong with that. They, they have given so many people a purpose and a community to be, to be part of, including me. Um, I... Most people, all my friends never heard of Grimm's <laughs> and all of, and, and they never heard of skills either. You know, like only skills we know of is mad skills from VA, you know, and, 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 and the change the way, uh, let's see, let me go back, including me. And all I see you doing is trying to segregate that. I want to cuss you out, but I'm hoping you internalize this and change your ways because this ain't how I want to feel towards you. It's just a shame to see all your skills and talents wasted on this hateful rhetoric surrounding entitlement and struggle for control over what you believe is your intellectual property. Oh, uh, yeah, it is my intellectual property. When do you file that again? 20 years ago? How long is your work protected again? All right. So, you know, imagine like people acting like this now in 2021. Imagine how they're acting in 1955 and 1978. They're saying they're dropping N words in it. But now he knows not to drop the N word. Seriously, as someone outside of this, I resent you with each new addition you make to this cloud of smoke. Why are you so divisive? Who hurt you? F for real? Um, who hurt me? Uh, you know, all my life I've been accosted by Caucasian males, whether it's, you know, police or whether it's, you know, people like yourself. I've been physically attacked, um, you know, multiple times, many times. And I'm a pacifist. All right. Um, but, you know, I, um, as a, you know, I used to be a, a sublet lord in uh, Williamsburg for a while. And, you know, I had a lot of uh, I called the police on a lot of uh, males of the European diaspora um, attacking me for similar reasons. You know, people don't like me being vocal and standing up for myself. All right. So my my draw was hanging. Oh, uh, oops. So 
Uh, let me re rewind this. So seriously, as someone outside of this, I resent you with each new addition you make to this cloud of smoke. Why are you so divisive? Who hurt you for real? My jaw has been open for most of this video. You are smart as hell, but wise you are not. This is so weird. He's like complimenting me and dissing me. It's like, it's just weird. Uh, just, this is very weird. Uh, from one grown man to another, I hope you can internalize this and find a more diplomatic way to resolve your issues because right now you sound like a damn fool. That's why I'm so amazed you created this system. I feel like it had a mind of its own. If it had a mind of its own, it would divorce you. <laughs> okay. And if you want to read what, how I replied to these people, you can go to the actual uh, you know, page and, and find out. The hypocrisy of claiming copyright violation over use of a system you claim was developed to support copyright protection, regardless, a pattern and a recording are two separate things. Only one is actually copyrightable. And it ain't this. I mean, it ain't the, uh, the one that's communicated via squiggles. Shaking my head. Big up. All the best, homie. Look. Only black guy. Look at that. He's got dreads. Big up. See? Proves my point. We got Asian and, and Caucasian people coming for me. Um, you know, only black dudes right there. All right. And I said, protect your cuts. You know. Question for students. When did the X-Men change their name to the Executioners? Right? Answer. Trade, do the trademark infringement. And this, that's what the whole nature of this lecture was about. And we're done. All right? That's, that's it. All right? So, yep. That's why the Executioners had to change their name. So let me flip back around. Oh, there's one last thing. There's one last thing I'm going to talk about. Uh, common Sense. So for those that don't know, the rapper that we now call Common... In the 90s, he was actually Common Sense. And why did he change his name from Common to, I mean, from Common Sense to Common? He changed his name from Common Sense to Common because he, uh, you know, this group, there was a group that predated him, um, a reggae group, a surf reggae group called Common Sense. And they were out before him. And I guess they had, you know, trademarked the name. So he had to change his name. He had to change his name to Common. So there is protection in hip hop. And you can protect, and if you're a hip hop artist, a DJ, a rapper, writer, you know, you know, you can you can protect yourself. You can protect your works, your arts. And if somebody steals your art, you can sue them, you know. And if somebody, you know, if trolls try to come at you and try to put you down, especially if you're, you know, a black male like yourself, if you're Moorish American, if you're Moorish diaspora from anywhere, you know, don't let them come at you and don't let them, you know, bring you down, you know. So that's it. Peace. Peace, everybody.